<laughs> yes. Yes, Lord. Can you lower this just a little? Glory! Glory! It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. It's flowing my way. Yes. Season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to you and me. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. His promises are yes and amen. Amen, amen. amen sister. <laughs> Glory, would you turn to Matthew 25, please? Welcome to Tuesday Night Live training session for the warriors of the Most High God. It's time to load up, rearm. We need more ammo. Ammo will kick butt. Yes. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Would you read it with me, please? <laughs> Maybe you better read it for me. <laughs> I got to say that again, the level of your commitment is the fruit of your level of your worship. <laughs> and the more you worship, the more you disappear. The more you get filled, the more you don't care. See, it's easier to cast your cares upon Jesus when you don't care. Here, take it. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, everybody should be joyful. You know, we have a choice to rejoice. Amen? You have a choice to be miserable or a choice to rejoice. And of course, if you become miserable, don't tell nobody you're a Christian. Amen? Stay in your closet till Jesus shows up, slams dunk you in the Holy Ghost, then come out. <laughs> then people will know you've been with Jesus. <laughs> And this is, this, you know, this is end time right now. And this is so, so essential. This is what God wants us. This is where he wants us to be. Remember, Jesus is looking for Jesus. Amen? He's looking for the divine nature of himself. And, you know, there's so much stuff going on and so much, you know, hard press all over, so much demonic influence, so much technology, so much lies, so much loss, so much garbage all over the place, that you have to stay filled. It is your defense. Amen? If you put, fill a glass up to the top and it's running over, you can't put nothing more in it. Amen. Devil can't touch you. Everyone say, can't touch this. Amen. Do, 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 do. Hallelujah. And this is what Jesus is requiring. One of the things that's happening right now, and people don't understand sometimes the difference between the oil and the wine. And it's so important that we get it, grab hold of this. And one of the things he's saying, he's saying, my people are not maintaining the new wine. Because when he brings out the new wine, they, 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 it, they lose it. it. It leaks, flows away, and they become dry. In Matthew 25, in verse 1, would you read it with me? The kingdom of heaven is like 
likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, virgins are associated with Christians, washed by the blood. You know, when you repent, you become a virgin. Ain't that something? Praise God. I didn't say you felt like one. You become one. Amen. And they went out to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were wise and five dumb or foolish. And those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Hello. How do you take a lamp without oil? How dumb can you be and still breathe, right? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. They all slumbered and slept. They took a rest. They became, they just became, continued to do what they've been doing. See, the one thing that those were doing what they've been doing, they didn't lose sight. See, even though they were still doing, they were still preparing. The other ones were still doing without preparing. Hmm. And this is what happened. And, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those arose and they trimmed their lamps. They trimmed their lamps so that they could become more brighter and be seen. But if you haven't got any oil, you can trim all you want. Hmm. Yeah. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise, pray for me. Pray for me. Jesus said, pray for yourself. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. Listen, the price everyone must pay is called cooperation. See, there were the wise that were willing to pay the price. The foolish weren't. They accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they went about their life and their business. And they didn't press in to become that worshiper because the Father seeks those who worship him in tr truth and spirit. Why? That's how you get the oil. Glory. But the wise answer is saying, nope, ain't happening. Lest there should not be enough for us and you. But you go pay your own price. You go to those who sell and buy for yourself. You go get it yourself. See, no one can get you your own oil. Only you get it. Amen. Amen. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. See, because they missed them anyways. There was something that was happening to them. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. And after the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Does everybody get this? Why? Because there's something about the oil and the wine that produces the divine nature, and Jesus only knows him. Oh, I don't know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Five wise, five foolish, foolish, no oil. Amen? Amen? So, the ones that got the oil were humble. They paid the price. God gave them more of his plan called grace. The ones that did not have the oil, pride was there. They thought they knew it all. The word says God rejects the proud. You know why? It takes humility to worship till you drop. See, you want to get so close to him that you're willing to do whatever it takes. You're pressing through each veil. Boom. You're pressing through. You're pressing through. You're pr this is not about a religious act. This is a battle. You're pressing through the battle lines because there is resistance to you. 
There's resistance to every veil. There's resistance to every chamber of the tabernacle. The enemy resists you. He does not want you. He will bring you to you while you're trying to press in. That's why the word says, seek his face. When you see it, you got there. See, what we're doing is we're pulling Jesus in. I'm going to grab hold of you, Dad. I'm not letting go. The word says, grab hold of him and he'll grab hold of you. Draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. So you're going to go grab him. Boom. And you're going to bring him in. See, but while you think you're bringing him in, he's bringing you in. <laughs> Glory. So the ones were being prepared and the ones were not. In James chapter 4. That's why it is vitally important right now that there is a level of praise that is expected. There's a level of praise and worship that is expected to bust through. It's like trying to bust through and hit a big, big water balloon. And when you hit it and pop it, poof! Yoo-hoo! You get saturated, but you got to get to it. In James chapter 4 and verse 1, would you speak it with me, please? Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for what? Pleasure that war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war and you do not have because you don't ask. Hello? You ask and don't receive. Why? Because you don't ask when I'm asking you to ask. How many of y'all know God wants to get you something, but he's, he's trying to impart in you to ask so he can release it to you? So when you're not asking what he's asking for you to ask for, you don't get it. Don't ask me to say that again, okay? You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your flesh or your pleasures. He said, what does he call me? He says, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he who, he gives what? More grace, which is God's plan. Therefore, he says, God resists the what? Proud. That's why they didn't get any more oil. But he gives grace to the what? Humble. Therefore, submit to God. Submit to God. Submit to God. Press into God. And then you'll be able to resist the devil. Amen? Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he'll what? He'll flee from you. <laughs> Because whatever one you're submitting to, you're going to resist. If you submit to the devil, you'll resist God. If you submit to God, you'll resist the devil. Amen? That's why it says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded means two masters. And remember, you can't serve two masters. The enemy will take you out. Serving two masters. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. The enemy, the world will suck you out. Is everybody okay? Glory. Let's go to nine. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to what? Gloom. That means he's going to, look at man, get yourself humbled. Well, look at number 10. This is powerful. He says what? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will what? Lift you up. He'll take you home. Lift you up. Does everybody get it? He will lift you up. In other words, you stay humble, you make it home. And then you're going to get into the most high. Glory. John 12. Woohoo. Oh. 
Yes. How many of y'all feel better now? You had to dance off that monkey, right? <laughs> you had to shake him off. He'd been flying around all over this place. <laughs> Bouncing off of walls. They couldn't take it no longer. They finally left. Wow, snap. Oh, John 12, verse 1. Would you read it, please? Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, who had uh, been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil a spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus and wept his feet with her hair. Talk about humble. <laughs> and, and the house was filled with the what? Fragrance of oil. But one of his disciples, Judas, uh, Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii given to the poor. <laughs> this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. Like Jesus didn't know. <laughs> but Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my what? Burial. Burial. Everyone say the anointing, the oil, the oil is for my death. Because you can't have life without first death. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. <laughs> Hallelujah. The oil, the anointing is for burial. Poured it on, it's for burial, it's to crucify the flesh, the anointing. Does everybody understand? Fragrant oil. I mean, you don't know God loves to smell your flesh cook. Yes. Ephesians 5. That's why Moses had to carry a veil when he came out of the glory of God. Because he got barbecued. And the glory of God was all over him. You know, it's amazing because in that spirit realm, there's no time. I love it. It was it said he didn't drink or eat anything for 40 days. He stepped in the glory. He thought he was taking notes for Jesus. He thought five minutes later, he's out. He come out with <laughs> this information. Forty days later, he's like, whoa. Man, I thought I just stepped in here. Forty days later. Glory. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Is everybody there? I love to get cooked in the presence of God. Therefore, be what? Imitators of God as dear children. And walk where? In love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as a what? Offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet swelling, a smelling aroma. See, you're doing the same thing. You become a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord. As you offer the sacrifices of praise, you are sacrificing yourself. You're putting your body on the altar. But he says, look at, but fornication and all uncleanness or, or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as 
fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the what? Sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Again, the oil produces a fragrance of death to self, known as the old man. That's why the more you worship, the more you're denying yourself, the more you're pressing in. In Mark chapter 2, in verse 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark 2.18, is everybody there? Everybody okay? Are you refreshed? Whew. Let's speak it. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to Jesus, Why do the disciples of John and, the, and of the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with him? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Or else the new piece pulls away from the old and the terror is made worse. And no one puts new wine into a what? That old, your body, your flesh, your old man is considered a wineskin. Your body is a wineskin. So everybody got it? Okay. No one puts a new wine into an old wineskin or else a new wine bursts the wineskins. The wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But the new wine must be put into a what? New wineskin. That is called harmony. See, what happens is people are, are they get a new wineskin. They get new wine. But they haven't cut loose of some of the things of the old. So when you haven't cut loose of the things that are old, it actually becomes a patch. And eventually, the new wine, it will burst, because of the new wine, it will burst that wineskin and it begins to drain. And then a the person becomes dry all over again. Does everybody understand this? New wine must be put into a new wineskin. Now, grab hold of this, because oil... Is fire to burn. It, it provides for a flame. Why? To burn the old man of the flesh. Has everybody got this? The new wine, okay, the oil is for the burning of the old man, and the new wine is for life. Why? Because the new wine is associated with the divine nature. When Jesus was at the table, he said, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood shall have life. So the wine is associated with, in other words, the oil comes to burn the old so that you can receive life. So when that new wine comes in, that old man still needs to be destroyed so that you maintain. And when you put oil on a wineskin, it helps us to expand and contract. It doesn't dry. Until you try to, until you pick up something from the past and it begins to touch that wineskin and it begins to crackle, begins to dry up. You try to patch it, it doesn't work, and you begin to drain that new wine. And that divine nature is, becomes taken over by the carnal nature. 
That's why right now the Lord is requiring that we maintain the new wine. Does everybody understand? Again, the oil is a fire to burn the old. It also lubricates the wineskin. The wine is the life, the divine nature. Jesus said, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood. The old man is the wineskin, is the garment, is the vessel that holds the life of Christ. That's why it's called the temple of God. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Again, this must be in harmony. This works in harmony. 1 Samuel 15. First Samuel fifteen twenty two. Now King Saul was anointed. In fact, keep your finger there and go to First Samuel ten. Let your fingers do the walking through the manual of God. Samuel, first 10. First Samuel, chapter 10. Is everybody there? Okay. Let's speak the first verse. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? This was King Saul. He was anointed. Amen? Something was about to happen to Saul here shortly. Are you ready for this? Verse 5. And then he says, and after that you shall go, come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is, and it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a string instrument, a tambourine and a flute, and a harp before them. Why? They were praising and worshiping. And they will be prophesying because the anointing will be there. There's been oil being poured. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and what? Be turned into another man. All glory. That happens every time you come into God's presence. You may look in the mirror and you're still the same. Maybe your smile's bigger. You know. Your eyes are clearer. And there's not things running in your eyes as much, you know. Hey, who is in there? <laughs> he said, you got to turn into another man. And, and let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. Then he tells me, he says, you shall go down before me to Gilgag, and surely I'll come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait till I come to you and show you what you should do. So Saul became a new man. He was anointed. The man of God, the voice of God through the prophet Samuel said, go here and then I will meet you. Now, I'm going to come and tell you what to do. See, we should be waiting on the next command. So it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him a what? Another heart. And all those signs came to pass. So I want you to see that Samuel was anointed. He became a new man. Amen. Now he was able to submit to God and obey God. But something happened. Verse, uh, chapter 15. He kept disobeying God. He became prideful. He became a man pleaser. What had happened was is he did not maintain new wine. Verse 22, so Samuel the prophet said to Saul, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices than in obeying the voice of the Lord? And to heed then the fat of the rams? For rebellion, everyone say rebellion, is a sign of witchcraft. And stubbornness 
is, is a iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Now, being king is also associated with the third chamber of the tabernacle. So some people get kicked out of there because of the rejection of what God is saying. Then Saul said, and then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I what? Feared the people instead of the Lord, and I obeyed their voice instead of God's voice. There's something that happened before that. He became dry. He began to rely on himself, the old man. The anointing was lifting more and more, and he didn't even realize it. But he stepped going, kept going, 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 not turning from his ways. Did everybody get it? In verse 25, it says, Now therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me, that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. That's authority. He said, you no longer have the authority. Let me tell you, the demons know when you've lost your authority. And as Samuel turned away to, uh, turned around to go away, Saul did what? Seized the edge of his robe and did what? Tore it. That's what occurred here is what Samuel or what Saul did to Samuel is actually what happened to Saul. His garment was torn. Does everybody understand this? That was symbolic. It was prophetic. He turned around and grabbed Samuel and tore his garment when Saul's garment was already torn because he had no new wine. He had the anointing was, he was drained. He was relying on himself because he had picked up something, gone back to his old way, depending on himself, relying more on his talents, his strength, his ability, and his position instead of God. Is everybody okay? That's the same thing as tearing your wineskin. Romans 6. He no longer denied himself, did he? Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 4. It says that there, therefore we were buried with Jesus through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we should also walk in the what? Newness of life. That newness of life is called the divine nature. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our what? Old man was what? Crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died to himself has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Does everybody see that? For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also do what? Reckon yourselves to be what? Dead. Indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And of course he says, therefore don't let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. So we must drive that out constantly. Remember the oil brings death. The wine brings life. I want to say that with me. The oil brings death. The wine brings life. What does the oil bring death to? Yourself. Then the wine comes and it brings the divine nature of Christ. Ephesians 4. Verse 20. It 
<laughs> yes. Let's speak it together, please. But you have not learned the anointing. You've not understood the anointing. You've not learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? Put off concerning your what? Former conduct, the old man, the... Does everybody get this? The old man. Why? Because it's contaminating. The old man which grows what? Corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind or your thoughts that you put on the what? New man, the new wineskin. So does everybody understand this? And The more that you take off of the old, every time there's an exchange, you're going to begin to take off the old wineskin. You're exchanging because the new wineskin and the new wine must become harmony all the time. So as you're taking off the old, God has given you the new. So you're always maintaining new wine by constantly taking off the old wine and putting on the new, the old wine skin and putting on the new wine skin. It's a constant. Every day. Is everybody okay? Do you get this? Praise God. I'm glad you get this. <laughs> Hallelujah. I lost where we are. <laughs> Which where were we at? 24. Thank you. <laughs> and that you put on the new what? Man, which is what? Created according to God in true righteousness and what? Holiness. And you can't be holy without the Holy Spirit, right? That's why he's called holy. Again, take off the old. Put on the new. So you get the oil, which burns up the old. Amen? It lubricates the wineskin, so you're able to move quick, dance around. Amen? The devil can't grab a hold of you because you're too slippery. Ever see the there ain't going there. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Glory. And then you get the new wine, which is the divine nature. Galatians 2. Man, there's just something about this person I can't grab hold of. The devil's freaking out. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 17. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I what? Destroyed, I make myself a what? Again, if you begin to build on those things that God delivered you from, it will rip your garment. And you will lose the new wine. Does everybody understand that? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> if we begin to build on those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So whatever God delivered you from, if you start doing that again, it tears. And then it drains. Has everybody got it? Cool. Cool. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been what? Crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live. But Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Build on those things that I destroyed. Anything of the old that is left and not destroyed will bring a terror to the new wineskin and it will drain us empty. Somebody got it. 
Why? Because God's saying it's time to maintain the new wine. And that will produce his divine nature. Amen? You know, it's pretty amazing. Think about this. Turn to John chapter 2 for a second. Why? Because the new wineskin and the new wine work harmony in the spirit. Death to self, life to Christ. Re remember this. Our end, everyone say, my end my is the beginning, of God. the beginning of God. Ooh. So we always want to come to our end so he can always begin. John chapter 2. Is everybody there? Uh, we're going to start at verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and disciples were invited to the wedding, and they ran out of wine. And the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Now I love this. Jesus said to her, woman, he didn't say, oh, ma, oh, mother. He said, woman. Why? Because she was no longer his mother. He was now his Lord, her Lord. And she got it. She said, man, he just called me woman. That's no longer my son. That's the king of glory. And he was about to perform his first miracle. What was he going to do? Turn water into wine. I mean, think about that. Why? Because that's what he wanted for me and you to do is maintain new wine. Watch this. Are you ready? So he said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour is not yet. And his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. She knew. Now there was, there were set there what? Six water pots, meaning man. The water pots were a representation of your old man, meaning man. There were water pots of stone, meaning a heart of stone. Hello? Has everybody got this? According to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 to 30 gallons apiece, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it to him. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. Hello? He called the what? Bride. He didn't call Jesus. He called the bridegroom of the wedding. Symbolic. And he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Does everybody get this? This is what Jesus, this is why it's the first thing he did. He said, listen, man, I, I, I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to change you. I'm going to change you. I'm going to bring you oil that's going to help you crucify you. I'm going to allow you to die with me in the baptism of repentance. And then I'm going to give you a new wineskin and give you new wine so that my divine nature is in this new wine. Does everybody get it? The divine nature is in the new wine. So the old must always continue to burn. So that we're always shedding a wineskin. So that we're always getting new wine. We're always maintaining a new and filling. Yes. Yes. And don't save your old wineskins. They're not souvenirs. Amen. Don't mail them to anyone. Throw them out. Let them burn. Amen. Amen. Revelation 6. Rev, le, Revelation. Revelation 6. Glory. 
<laughs> See, you know when you shed that wineskin and that new wine comes, there's such harmony. It's no longer you no more. There's a new you. Revelation 6, verse 5. Is everybody there? Sheesh. Let's speak it, okay? I'm going to need your help. <laughs> it says, when you open to what? Third seal. Why? Representing also third day. I'm, we don't have to get into all of this right now. I heard a, the what? Third. third living creature say, come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the fourth living creature saying, of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a Daenerys and three quarts of bar barley for a Daenerys. And do not harm the what? Wine and the oil. Wow. Don't harm the wine and the oil. Why? Because he knew that that's what's going to keep his divine character in his people, his divine nature. Has so everybody got this? Don't harm the wine, or don't harm the oil or the wine. Oil brings fire to burn impurities. And again, moisture to the wineskin until renewed. Amen? And when we renew with the, the wine, the renewed wine brings new life, which is the divine nature of Christ. 1 John chapter 4. So when the Lord brings you through trials and tribulations, he said, count it all joy, right? What's he trying to do? Trying to get you on fire, man. Trying to replace your wineskin. How many people grumble and complain while they're going through stuff and that's all God is trying to do is take off that garment, man. I got something fresh for you. You've been hanging around with the world too long and you stink. See, the world stinks. Verse 4. 1 John 4, 4. You are what? Of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world what? Hears them. That's why sometimes people... Don't get what you're saying. There was a, bu uh, 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 a bus of one time kids came on. I don't know. I guess there were kids. Somebody brought somebody on our campus to volunteer for something. And so the guy that the, the brought them on, that drove them on, and we put them to work and whatever, he said, would you mind speaking to them? So I went up on the bus, and the first words out of my mouth is, you will not understand my language. What the heck? <laughs> because I began to speak about eternal things and they couldn't understand because they were still of the world. So the Lord said, bring it down. <laughs> I said, okay. God loves you. See you later. <laughs> That's how you go. Like, <laughs> I could have gone... You're going to hell if you don't stay right, man. You know, I, I figured I'd leave them with God's love for the moment. They may come back around again. We'll check that out. In verse 6, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And we see plenty of it, don't we? But he who is in us is greater than he is in the world. How is that accomplished? With new wine. Does everybody got it? So we must allow the oil to constantly replace the old wineskin. When that new wineskin comes, new wine comes. It works in harmony. You're able to walk in a divine nature and express Christ. Revelation 3. Glory. Revelation 3, 
Revelation 3. Revelation 3 and verse 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak together. You have a few names, even Sardius, who have not, what? Defiled their garments. In other words, torn them. It's a representation of the wineskin. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are, what? Worthy. So they did not defile their garments. Does everybody understand that? They allowed the anointing, the oil, to burn. Amen. And they maintain a new wineskin and new wine. So they were able to maintain that, expressing the divine character of Christ. The Lord said, I found them worthy. So everybody got it. In verse 5, he who overcomes shall be clothed in what? White garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Do you know that everybody's name stays in the book of life until they give up their last breath? That's why children go to heaven when they die. Because their name's already written in the book. It's, it either stays or is blotted out the day you give up your last breath. Judgment is immediate when you give up your last breath. That's it. Determine whether your name stays or goes. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He was in ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Verse 18. I do what? I counsel you to buy. And what's the price? Cooperation. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and what? Repent, turn from the ways. So everybody got it. Watch this. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and be in, in he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And he who is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Maintaining new wine, divine nature is by removing the old and replenish the new wineskin with new wine, which works in harmony. And I'll close at Revelation 16. <laughs> Revelation 16. You know, when they, on the day of Pentecost, what did they say? Oh, man, they're all filled with wine. They think these dudes are drunk, man. Yeah, they were filled with new wine, all right. But it wasn't at Joel's bar. It was at Joel's place. Amen? It was from the Holy Ghost. Revelation 16 in verse, oh, snap, 15. Behold what? I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who what? Watches and does what? Keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. I am coming. Remember, we're on a two-minute warning. Amen? It's a two-minute warning. Praise God. We don't know how long two-minute warning is in this God's kingdom. But it's a two-minute warning. Things are about to happen. There's about sh good shaking going on. But there's about to be transferred. All kinds of things are going to change very quickly. And remember, it's to bring in the time of plenty before the time of famine so that many souls can be rescued. So let's maintain the new wine, amen, which produces the divine nature of God Almighty. So everybody got this. It's important in how you worship. It's important. Amen. Praise God. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. For you are faithful. 
You are continuously faithful. You said you sent your word and will not return void. So Lord, let the word that's been imparted in us tonight be protected by the blood of Jesus. Let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. Let it penetrate every wall of resistance that we may see, hear, receive, obey, and execute according to your will. That we may be your sons and daughters that please you in every area, expressing your divine nature by maintaining new wineskins with new wine. And to you be all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give him a mighty hand. <laughs>